So I was actually here a few weeks ago and Al Haker, the head technician here, took me on a tour of all seven chambers of the organ. So I'd like to show that to you now. This is Al Haker. He is the head technician here, a member of the St. Louis Theater Organ Society, and that's who cares for this instrument, right? Right. So um, what's taking care of this big instrument like? How, what do you have to do it's, to keep it, it playing? It's a constant challenge because the instrument was built in 1928. Mm -hmm. It's original installation. Everything is just like it was in 1928 pretty well. So it's running on original, yeah. all original and parts? And a, lot of, a lot of original leather. We've replaced some of yeah. it, obviously. But um, it, uh, it takes a lot of TLC to keep this thing going. <laughs> and you have to be here pretty much any time the organ's in use and pretty being played. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes with the tours I'm not here, but right. uh, if something goes haywire, I get a call right away. <laughs> well, I know, I know one of the reasons you're, you're needed, uh, and it's something that I would find really annoying if I was a regular organist here, is if you want to change just one little stop on a piston, you can't do it from the console. You have to go, where do we down, go from down here? Down in the basement, the, basement. In the relay room, and there's actually little tiny safety pins for each stop. So for each stop, and how many, how many about, not? There's about 350 stops. 350 stops, and then you have, for each piston, you've got one of those that you can well, adjust? Well, that's, that's correct, each piston. Wow. There's, there's 70 pistons. If you count the, the, the two rows of them are actually double touch. Oh, so you can, you can you you press have, to, you have to set two different great, and then you connections. push it all the way in, it does all of them. So <laughs> it, that creates more. So that well, let's, if you count them all together, it's 70 times 350. Oh my gosh, let's go take a look at it. I want to go okay. see this original thing. So before we went downstairs, Al took the back off the consoles. We could look inside. It's a little hard to see, but you can notice some of the pneumatic tubing controls the stop action, as well as the controls that link the expression shoes up to the indicators at the top of the console. They're all just hard connections from the shoe up to those wooden indicators. here in front of you, this is the combination. So there, these are the junction boards, and these are the safety pins I was telling you about. So every, see here, it said this is the accompaniment manual, all the stops that are on the accompaniment manual, and then all the, the pistons that are on the accompaniment manual. So there's however many stops there are, I don't know how many there are, but there's a pin for each stop, and then one, one pin for each one. So it's this way and this way. This is off, this is neutral, it doesn't go either way. And then to the left is on. So when you hit the PP on the solo, this, uh, the main tremulant would come on. So you just click them over the switch then. Right, so I like that. And of course, the, here's the pneumatics inside. There's another set of pneumatics inside there to make that have little fingers on them to make them move. So, complement three, complement FF. So all this is Ooh. wired in. So you can see the. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's the uh, up, up here. I don't know. I can I can open this. So see all the fingers in, up here on the top. So when you when you hit one of those, it goes down and it makes all those move. So whichever the, uh, 
knees activate that. So when you press a, a piston out there, it makes this move. So whatever this was, accompaniment three, push that down, and then what's ever set on the pins gets to 12 volts, and then goes back out to the console to operate it. You with me on that? Yeah. So these are, these are the pneumatics for the other side, and then the pneumatics for the other side that are on the other side of these, so it's just the opposite. So you can see this is quite a challenge to get to this, and I don't, I, I still don't fully understand it. I'm pretty close. So. So, and it's the same thing on the other side. Yeah. So the, the great, and this is the pedal on the bottom. People kick this all the time when they come through here, so they put a piece of plexiglass so they wouldn't kick it. These are all the pedal stops. <coughs> and these are, some of these are double touch. The great is all double touch. So what happens is when you, when you press the first touch on the great, it just moves the grate stops, but if you push it all the way in, it moves, say if you push in number eight, it, it moves all the number eights and all the manuals. It's like a, a general. Oh, so it's like, it does the first yeah. touch on all of, are all of them double touch or just the grate? Oh, just the grate. Okay. And the pedal has just the accompaniment in the pedal. So the first touch just does the pedal, and the second touch brings on the accompaniment. And then there's a separate set of accompaniment systems too, that just do single touch. Mm. It's really complicated. Yeah. So, uh, let's see what, I forgot which one. One's the great, uh, it says on or what great, they are. Right here, great. So there's there's three sets of these for great the great, accompaniment. two for the accompaniment. So there's more stops on the great, of course. Mm -hmm. So there's three uh, for each key, three uh, pneumatic. And there's, so when you press one of these, and it, it, it puts a, a, on the other side, you can see in the glass, there's actually the same kind of, uh, pneumatic that puts down a big bar that has 12 volts in it and then it activates them. So this has three, this only has two for each key. But, you know, there's stops down. I've been playing the organ from here. So each one has, so this great accompaniment, the ones in the back, the solo pedal, and then the, uh, and the uh, bombard is back there as well. The notes are numbered here. Yeah, they're numbered, kind of. Yep. So that's how that's how they work. They're every there's three rows, so every third one is moves as it goes down. So you have to count up three. So there's three sets of these. So that's this is the great second touch here. And a separate set of those, and that's uh, the bombard. The bombard has second touch, but it's on the manual, so it's not in there. Mm. But the great second touch, the pedal. There's a pedal second touch too. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So this is the key relay. So over, these are the stops over on this side. So each one is marked with the top kind of. Says this is the English horn spreader. So the 73 notes for the English post horn are here, and these are all the manuals or stops that you can get the English post horn. This one is down for some reason, maybe you put it down, I don't know. And then underneath here are the pneumatics for it. I went ahead and go the other way. This is, this is the accompaniment to Chris Abar. Mm -hmm. See it moving, that, that makes those spreaders move. Are they moving? Yep. That's, I don't know what that is. Uh, that's the orchestral oboe. Okay. Plus these two are all tibias for one tibia. Uh, because so it's available in so many it's stop a, a, tabs every, everywhere. A, every, every manual, the pedal, and about three or four different uh, uh, octaves. Huh. I think there's actually 22. So here we are, the solo piccolo two. There's actually a two foot stop on this thing. So uh -huh. that's, uh, these two are the sostenuto relays. You know, when you, when you keep a cord down on the grate, it'll stay down until you hit another one. Mm. So that, that's what this does. And these are the pizzicato couplers. So if you, if you press a note, it's a coupler. It couples from the solo down to either the grate or the accompaniment or to the pedal. It'll actually 
it'll pitch it. So it'll just all you hear is just plunk. Mm -hmm. And then the other the other sounds will play. Wait, I can show you. Demonstrate. The the, the sostenuto is actually a ventil. Mm. So when you when you hit the switch for the sostenuto, it fills these with air, and then it, it, it'll, it'll do that until you shut it off. Same for the pizzicato. Or? The pizzicato is a coupler. Okay, it's a coupler. So it it, it, it only works when there's a, when you have that, that coupler on outside. This this particular one doesn't work because that was for the slave console. No, oh, right. And it's all disconnected, so none of that works. You can see that was just as intense. Console number two, see that firing switch and how all that works, I have no idea. Because <laughs> I don't need to know. We don't have right. a console number two. Okay, we can take the elevator up to the sixth floor and that'll get us close to the orchestral chamber. And that's that's be the first chamber that we go into. Tell me again what chambers we have on this side. The orchestral chamber and the solo chamber and the piano chamber and the, uh, the uh, percussion chamber as well. The percussion chamber actually does have shutters in front of it, but I have them wide open. I see no reason to put, uh, put any uh, per, uh, shutters on the uh, percussion, so I have them wide open. It's, it, there's a lot of hissing. The thing is not, it's not quiet. So, you know, it's, there's 36 inches of wind pressure up here. Right here. I can identify the pipes if you want. Please. Okay, the, the front set is the tuba mirabilis. The next is the English post horn. And then beyond that is the uh, tibia. One of the three tibias in the organ. And the next thing is the solo string. And then the, the one in the back is the vox humana. These are all high pressure. So the, the, the tuba has 15 inches, the post horn is 15. The tibia is on 25 inches, and the uh, solo string is on 29 inches, and then the, the box is on 10 inches. Most of them are on six or seven. This one's on 10. And these are two of the 17 tremulants that are in the organ. So there's more up here. Every every stop here has got a tremolo. I think there's five tremolos. These are the 16 foot strings, the 8 foot strings. Is this a vacuum motor over here? For yeah, this is a vacuum motor. That's the original one from here. And it has some kind of leather strap arrangement.
And then we got some percussion out here. That is there anything in was, front? That actually was downstairs in the percussion chamber. Again, something was buried, and we brought it up here. So it plays, if you can hear it out with the auditorium, you can see mm -hmm. this is unenclosed. Cool. And that's, a, that's one of the three xylophones of the organ. Actually, three of them. Get my good side. <laughs> So where are we going now? Okay, we're going to the solo chamber. We can walk down here. box in all four chambers. <laughs> four boxes. In the back is another tibia, and in the middle, that's the quintadina. Mm -hmm. And then the, the brass saxophone. Okay, this is a two-rank string. Hmm. They're like solutionals, but they're tuned in unison. So, uh, so it's in two ranks. So they don't celeste, they're no, unison? No, these don't celeste. Hmm. Then behind this is the French horn. That's the brass trumpet. Brass trumpet. There's two brass trumpets in the arc, this is the small one. This <laughs> one's on lower, this is only on 10 inches. The history behind this, when I got here, there was no French horn here. Oh. It was actually a, a Kendall trumpet from four foot up. I guess George Wright came here and said he wanted the French horn and took it. He said you need to have upper work, so he put the four foot and the eight foot. And so I found another French horn, but it's not an original one. It's Wurlitzer, but it's uh, from a church, so it's not really big. Half of the 16s, the other half are back up in there, and then this is the eight foot to the front. Okay, well, this is the percussion chain. So, two sleigh bells. Gong. Snare drum. Horses' hoops. Bird whistle. The ooga horn. A bell like a school bell. And the uh, the this is the. Uh, this is the boat whistle. There's two of them that play together. There's a, there's a train whistle here. It has a unique set of pipes. Double mouth pipe. This is the only one of these. Well, there's three of them here for this, this, this uh, train whistle thing. These are tuned timpanies that there's about five or six Wurlitzer organs that had these on them. All the five Fox organs have them and a couple others. So they're really unique. And basically they're two marsh tones, if you can tell. So that's what they sound like too. And uh, I think I can make them play. How many is one, two, three, four, five? Of them. They're F to F, like Kelly Rums would be. F to F. So this is actually, I think we're over there is F. F sharp, G sharp. <laughs> and uh, and
So from the stage now, we were just over there in those chambers. And so now we're going to what chambers are on this side? Okay, it's the foundation chamber in the main chamber and the diaphone chamber. Foundation, main, and diaphone. Yeah, okay. we're going, we have to go up and we have to walk behind those columns. So that's where we're going. All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs> this, this was the original way that they got up into those chambers upstairs. You, act, you put a ladder up into that trap door and then went up on it. And as soon as you got to that, there's a walkway, little narrow boards that go farther back. And then there's another ladder that gets up into the diaphone chamber. That's how they got in before they cut off. We'll, we'll see how you get into it now. It's, it doesn't seem easier, but I think it's a lot easier. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a little small hole, but it's better than trying to get up through there. I got <laughs> this is where it gets tricky. Okay. Step up on this, step up on that thing. This. Mm -hmm. right, I'm just going to watch you going in. I, I'm going to watch you go in first and then I'll. <laughs> Can you make it, you think? Yeah, sure. I always, I, I put my left foot in and hang on to the top and yeah. then on the other side onto the shutters and you kind of pull yourself through. Okay. Yeah, we're in the main chamber. All right. I'm just going to go through here. Tell me what we're looking at on the main on this chest. Okay, the very first one is the tubal horn. Horn diaphasin. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the open diaphasin. <coughs> and there's two flutes. One is the uh, Liebelig flute, I think it is. Yeah, Liebelig flute. And then there's uh, the concert flute. They're kind of buried down behind the yeah. diaphasin. It's the one in the front, too, see? To the horn, then the, the horn diaphasin, and then the Liebelig flute, you can tell because it has those little tiny pipes that stop the yeah. <laughs> And then the open diaphasin, and then the, uh, yeah, and then the very last one, way in the back, that's a crummet. Oh, all right. Those are the eight foot flutes. Uh, I don't know, one, one is a Liebelig flute, one there's another set of constant. This is a metal diaphragm. This is the uh, eight foot horn diaphragm. There's only seven of them. And then the next one, I think the G starts on the chest. Put two bar. 
resonant. Two barn is good. This door is how they got the organ in here. If you open this door, there's nothing out there. You're, you're looking down three stories. So when they when they, they cantilever it, I guess the big pipes the, the uh, in, into this door. Now I put this on here because it leaked like a sieve. Not only rain, but it's on the west side, but hot air, cold air, so I put all that insulation. So it made a big difference in this chamber. <laughs> Oceanus, which are kind of a waste of time. <laughs> I got a set of these because they had taken it. There was no pipes in here. And the whole rank was missing. Mm. Stan said they were never here. Well, I don't know if that's right or not. I can't imagine that Worlds would have put something in without the there's the eight string. Okay. Another trend. Here's the other crystal block on the boat. C and the C sharp and the B and the, the A sharp are in between the two. And then this is the D and the D sharp. Those are cathedral chimes, I think mm -hmm. the, the low C I think is about eight feet long. So those are all the beater boxes down there. Huge beaters. That, that low C down there in the beater is, is six inches in diameter. Huh. Pretty low, that's C sharp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Oh, all These right. are some of the percussions we took out from that toy counter back there. The door way over on the wall. And get those big dive cases and they had to bring them up those stairs and put them and install them up here. Is it? So, <laughs> big chunks of wood, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. So that's the diaphone chamber, and then this is foundation. This is what they foundation. call the foundation chamber. So we have more of the diaphone. Yeah, this is the, these are the, those are the 16-foot diaphones in the back. These are 8-foot, and they continue on into here. G or G sharp, they go off in the metal pipes. Still on 25 inches, <laughs> but on a different regular. Yeah, I the think. The lights up here don't work because of the floods that we had. Oh, yeah. It out, you know, why it don't work. So we have to burst. No. That's usually the 16 foot tibias. Half of them, and then the other half is behind them. And these are the eight quarters. This is the eight foot Gems Horn, uh, and this is Gems Horn Celeste. Okay. So it's on a Celeste. Did I say Gems Horn? No. You did. What is it? Gamba. Gamba, so, okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. No, that makes more sense. These are pretty heavy duty <laughs> really good Okay, in front of you, this is the uh, tibia, foundation tibia, the third tibia in the order. We call them Mama, Papa, Papa, Mama, and Baby. This is Mama. Because <laughs> it's on 15 inches, but it's always pretty hefty. And the one we saw over in the orchestral, that's Papa, that's on 25. Mm -hmm. And the one in the solo, is meeker. This is the rest of the gamma here. Mm -hmm. And again, it's the last. And that's a, a four foot harmonic mm -hmm. piccolo. You can see it's harmonic. Yeah. It's got the holes cut in it. Not piccolo. Flute. Uh, flute. Harmonic flute. Well, it is a piccolo because oh. these pipes, <laughs> these little tiny pipes, they got holes in them. At the very top, that you hear down there. <laughs> so, and then behind it, that's the other brass trumpet, the one that's on 15 inches. This is about twice as loud as the other one. Okay. Most of the airlines, they come up from downstairs. All right. And they go up over the proscenium to get to the other side. The bowler room is right over the floor. <laughs> so in the have... front here, this is a musette. And it's original. Everybody says they have a copy of it. Nobody has the original. This is the original. It's just a buzzer, like the like the canary. <laughs>
You can't talk about the St. Louis Fox Theater and its organ without mentioning the name Stan Can. He was the house organist here starting in 1952. He left St. Louis for a career in TV and comedy, but he ended up coming back and spearheaded the campaign to get this organ playing again when he returned. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Escape from New York, uh, filmed in 1984, I think, some of those scenes were shot in this neighborhood, and they used this for an apocalyptic scene of the future, uh, and it was modern-day St. Louis. Uh, to see it today, it's all been completely transformed, uh, but they shot some scenes here in the Fox Theater. They didn't have to do anything. Uh, it was already run down, and it looked dilapidated. Uh, the organ wasn't playing. Today, when you come here, it's been restored and is a gem of the city, uh, and we have Stan Can, one of the many people to thank uh, for making this possible. Well, Stephen, thank you for demonstrating this wonderful 1928 Fox Special Organ here at the Fabulous Fox in St. Louis. Uh, it's an amazing experience to hear this instrument, uh, and you did, demonstrated it so thoroughly and so well. Uh, I hope everyone's happy with this video, this long-awaited video, yes. uh, finally getting online. We have so many people to thank for making this happen today, because this is a busy place. We can't just walk in and play the organ anytime. In fact, it's a little sad that the organ's not out being played more. Right. Well, it does get used fairly often for tours. More often than not, you can come here and, and uh, hear the, the big organ. You should call in advance, though, because if the stage shows require the use of the orchestra pit, then sometimes it has to be covered. Um, but it's the fact that the building has committed so strongly to the preservation of this. This is what's important here is not just the organ but this incredible environment it's in. You know, this is really a national treasure, and it's, it's a great privilege to be able to be here presenting the instrument for you today uh, and giving you some idea about its original life in the theater, and hopefully perhaps a glimpse about what might be its future as well. I offer thanks to the St. Louis Theodore Organ Society for their help in making this happen. Uh, thanks especially to Al Haker. He was instrumental in making this video happen today. Thanks to Lisa and the stage crew here who yeah. offered their assistance. It's a whole host of people that it took to make this happen on a busy Monday morning. Uh, and I'm so glad to finally get this online. Yes. There were so many of you that expressed interest. Thank you to all of you who purchased tickets to help us fund uh, this video today. And we need to thank each one of you individually. Uh, but for that, Stephen, I think we need some uh, music to play us out. Sounds good. Right.